Morning, lovely viewer. Well, as some of you may know, I'm at my mum's house today and we're gonna do a, a tour of this no dig rose garden experiment that I've done. You saw me do this in August of last year. August of last year, this was all grass. And I put down sheets of cardboard and um, four to five inches of organic uh, plant-based mulch. And um, in my humble, it has been an extraordinary success. This here is Eustacia Vi and 10 months old. It's, it's unbelievable. This, when I got it, it was tiny. It was absolutely tiny. It was the runt of the, the roses. There was nothing to it. And she is absolutely flying now. You know, when I pull up on my driveway, on my mum's driveway, you get the, the rose fragrance. It's insane. It really is. I'm not gonna tell you what all the roses are because there's a lot I need to get through. Look at the size of that. Beautiful. Rosemary Harkness. But I will, I will put the description in the bottom there. Yeah, four to five inches of plant-based organic mulch went down on the ground. That has now sunk into the soil. And in terms of weeding, since August last year, less than an hour. In terms of weed prevention, it has been a huge success. And I think that the fact that I mulched it in August, it's now gone down to sort of soil level. It's had time to sink in and that plant-based mulch has had time to feed the soil. I think we're now seeing the, the benefits. So that is why in my garden, I'm going to, I'm going to mulch in probably early September, September some point, and I'm going to mulch in March. Now I mulched my garden in sort of mid-April and that is why I say that that it's it was possibly a little bit too late. No feed, no feed in my garden or my mum's garden. This, uh, my mum has had nothing done to her garden at all this year. But I wanted, I'm just looking around, this bucket will do. I want to just give you a size comparison as to how, how well these roses are doing. That is your average bucket. Absolutely flying. And my mum has, I mean, look, she's, she takes out nice big cuts for her vases. This would be even bigger. Absolutely fantastic. Another name for this, Julia Child, AKA absolutely fabulous, magnificent fragrance, but doing, doing really, really well. Look at this, Shandos Beauty. Look at that. Look at that flower. Really, really well. Now these, these two here, this one, it didn't do, I can't remember the name of it. I'll have to put it in the bottom. It did kind of flop over. It has been floppy, but it has been very windy. I have had to stake some of these roses, not because they needed it, but because of, we've had strong winds this year, like relentless sort of strong winds. This one is Mill on the Floss. And again, these are all past my, my waist. You know, this one's approaching my chest, as is of course, Emily Bronte, way over, way over my waist. Let's get that to focus. Oscar Bell, it needs um, deadheading, it needs tidying up around here. This one here has gone slightly over. This is Spicy Parfumer. But again, great growth. I have planted many roses in my garden at the same sort of time as my mum's and these are doing much better. And I think that's because the malt went down earlier and it had that time. But this is Fruity Parfumer and you see it needs, it needs deadheading. But the beauty of this is we are seeing the all important fresh growth coming through and strong growth as well. 
Now, this bed here, I've done a, a video, Dharma is it? Um, a little while ago, last week. And this bed here, when I created it, I ran out of plant-based organic mulch. So I put down rotted horse manure. And I tried, I know I've shown Gav, and I tried to show Dharma as well, but the roses in this bed here, they are literally half the size. Now there's nothing scientific about that. I'll try and get the kind of shot in if I can, if you can see it, but they are literally half the size. And there's, you know, there's nothing mathematical to it. It could have been anything. We've got fragrant cloud here. We've got Princess Alexandra of Kent. Look at that. Beautiful and lovely fragrance. And we've got Gabriel Oak just, just there. But they are literally half half the size. And they everything gets the same sort of sun. The sun it starts over there and it comes over the over the top. So the sunshine hours is is pretty much the same. But and this one here, it did need more weeding than these. It really, it really did. Now, if you saw one of my previous videos, you saw that I did hit a gas pipe over there, three inches beneath the grass. I stabbed the fork in and I, I hit a gas main, unfortunately. So that is now incomplete. But as I said to my mum recently, um, I was trying to make a love heart around here with these roses behind me. There's some more as well. And to bring it around this way, to to have this sort of love heart. My mum was upset at the time. There was a tragedy in the family and um, that is what I was trying to do. Now, I was, <laughs> I was, when this was completed, I was gonna use a drone and get a drone to go up in the air across here. And when it was sort of 60, 70 feet, I was gonna put some funky music to it, the video, and I was gonna drop the gimbal down at that crescendo moment to reveal that love heart. But um, that would have been a, a nice sort of three second thing, a bit like my love making, but we haven't done it now. But the idea, the idea was there, not that you would wanna do that sort of thing in your garden or I would wanna do in my garden, but mums, they, they love all that, don't they? You all right, mum, do you wanna say hello? I'm doing a video. <laughs> and this is Cherry. This is Cherry, our dog. <laughs> Would you like a drink? No, I'm fine, thanks, Mum. I'm fine. I'm just going to finish this video off. But yeah, overall, I think a, a great, a great success, and I'm hoping you can see the, the growth. Someone, when I created this bed, someone did drop a comment saying that when I, when I dug the holes, if you remember, I dug those small holes that were just the size of the plastic sort of pots. Um, and that was it. And I dropped the, you know, the empty sort of roses, root balls in. He said that I would be effectively root balling the roses. The roses would touch the native soil. They wouldn't go any further and that they would just become root bound within those small holes that I, that I dug. But I think you can see here, it's, it's for me at least, it's pretty compelling that they are, they are absolutely flying and the soil is very clayey here there is a lot of of clay soil um, and I know clay soil gets a lot of sort of bad press because it's not good for the for the drainage now the holes I did dig sort of eight to ten inches deeper than I needed to and I backfilled that with topsoil um, but I'm pretty sure that these roses are, are not root bound. This is Gabriel Oak. And we're seeing nice, strong, strong growth from, from here. And the ground is very dry. I've only watered these roses three times this year. Three times this year. In fact, you can see, you can see just the ground. It is all starting to crack. Can you see there? This is the, the most difficult part of it was, was of course the borders keeping those in check but I don't get here as often as as I would like but no feed um, and just that mulch in August of last year outside of that 
they, they haven't been touched. But there you go, lovely viewer, in case you wanted an update. <laughs> Sandos Beauty. Here is the update of my, my mum's no-dig rose garden. Right, lovely viewer, I hope you have a lovely day.